माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर जयमल कुमारी असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिजियोलॉजी अनुग्रह नारायण मगध मेडिकल कॉलेज गया इन ह्यूमन बींग रिप्रोडक्टिव सिस्टम ऑफ मेल एंड फीमेल डिफर एनाटमिकली एंड फिजियोलॉजिकली टूडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट मेल रिप्रोडक्टिव सिस्टम बाय द एंड ऑफ दिस सेक्शन यू विल बी एबल टू डिस्क्राइब द स्ट्रक्चर एंड फंक्शन ऑफ द मेल रिप्रोडक्टिव सिस्टम press the pathway of these bump cells in the organ system blood test is barrier steps involved in spermatogenesis regulation of testicular functions function of male sex hormone that is testosterone and its applied physiology so what is the male reproductive system the male reproductive organs are specialized to perform the following functions first to produce and maintain and transport sperm the male reproductive cells and protective fluid semen second to discharge sperm within the female reproductive tract and to produce and secrete male sex hormones the male reproductive system comprises of the internal and external genital organs external genital organs include penis and scrotum whereas internal genital organs include a pair of testes as primary sex organ duct system which is store and transport sperm to the exterior includes epididymis vas deferens or ductus deferens ejaculatory ducts whereas accessory glands include seminal vesicles prostate gland and bulbourethral gland or corpus gland This picture is showing components of male reproductive system with its important function. Primary sex organ is testis. Main function is produce spermatozoa and synthesis of male sex hormone. Accessory glands include two seminal vesicles, one prostate gland and two bulbourethral glands. Its function is manufacture and secrete the seminal fluid. Accessory ducts include epididymis, vas deferens, ejaculatory ducts. function is passage of sperm and seminal fluid whereas penis act as a copulatory organ next is structure of testis testis is oval in shape 4.5 cm long 2.5 cm wide and 3 cm in thickness an adult testis weight about 10 to 15 grams it is located outside the body cavity suspended in the scrotum by spermatic cord The right testis lies slightly higher than the left testis. This testis is divided into two parts. Parenchyma of testis is surrounded by a fibrous connective tissue. It is covered by three layers: tunica albuginea, tunica vaginalis, and tunica vascularis. Whereas parenchyma is divided into two comp- compartments: seminiferous tubular compartment and interstitial compartment this seminiferous tubular compartment contains sertoli cells and spermatogenic cells a main function is production of sperm whereas interstitial tissue contains leading cells which produces male sex hormone that is testosterone as i told you in my last slide that testis is covered by three coats from outside inward tunica vaginalis tunica albuginea and tunica vascularis this tunica vaginalis is the outermost covering it is the lower persistent portion of processus vaginalis covers whole testis except posterior border as parietal and visceral layer tunica albuginea is dense white fibrous coat covering the testis whose posterior border thickened to form mediastinum testis numerous septa extend from it into the inner surface tunica vascularis is the innermost vascular coat network of capillaries supported by delicate connective tissue a thin fluid layer separates the two sections and reduces friction between the testis and the scrotum interstitial compartment of parenchyma of testis lies between the seminiferous tubules constitute about 10 to 20% volume of the testis It is filled by loose interstitial tissue and leading cells. 
it constitute the endocrine component of the testis synthesize and secrete testosterone hormone seminiferous tubular compartment of parenchyma is the area of spermatogenesis from the mediastinum delicate fibrous septa radiate towards the tunica albuginea and divide the parenchyma of the testis into about 300 lobuli each lobule contains 1 to 4 convoluted seminiferous tubules each seminiferous tubule continues near the mediastinum into a straight tubule seminiferous tubules may constitute up to 90% of the testis the tubule wall consists of a multilayered germinal cells containing spermatogenic cells and sertoli nutritive cells that have the heads of maturing sperm embedded in them the seminiferous tubules from different areas of a testis unite to form a network of interconnected tubes the rete testis what is efferent ducts or ductuli efferentis this efferent ducts located between the rete testis and the epididymis these tubules converge to form a single highly coiled duct the epididymis they connect the testis to the male ducts and facilitate the transport of sperm from the testis next is accessory ducts which includes epididymis vas deferens and ejaculatory duct sperms are formed in seminiferous tubules and then empty into epididymis which is a coiled tube of about 6 m in length it is a common shaped structure that connects a testis to a vas deferens it is divided into three main regions head body and tail the head of the epididymis is located on the superior pole of the testis it stores sperm for maturation the body of the epididymis is a highly convoluted duct that connects the head to the tail of the epididymis this is where the sperm matures the tail of the epididymis is continuous with the different ducts so main functions of epididymis is acts as a reservoir of spermatozoa provides nourishment and maturation of sperm and sperm acquires its motility in epididymis next accessory duct is vas deferens or ductus deferens it is the continuation of the epididymis it lies posterior to testis and medial to epididymis it crosses inguinal canal exits a deep inguinal ring crosses external iliac vessels crosses the ureter along the bladder and joins the duct of the seminal vesicles to form the ejaculatory duct its main function is transporting spermatozoa from the epididymis to the ejaculatory ducts each ejaculatory duct is a slender tube that arises by the union of the ductus deferens with the duct of seminal vesicle the ejaculatory ducts open as minute slit like opening into the prostatic urethra the accessory sex glands are specialized structures found in males that produce fluids essential for the motility nourishment and protection of sperm males have three of these glands and each one contributes to the production of semen they are the seminal vesicle the bulbo urethral gland and the prostate gland the first pair we will talk about are the seminal vesicles these are paired secretory glands located on either side of the ampulla of the ductus deferens between the urinary bladder and rectum it secretes thick and viscid alkaline secretions and it contributes 60% of semen's total volume this fluid contains fructose phosphorylcholine and citric acid which provides energy for movement of the sperm ascorbic acid and hyaluronidase enzyme split muco polysaccharides so sperm can penetrate the cervical mucus plug next accessory gland is bulbo urethral gland it is p size gland located below the prostate gland opens into the bulbar portion of the urethra 
Secretion is mucoid alkaline in nature. Its main function is lubrication and protects the sperm from acidity present in male urethra and female vagina. Secretion of this bulbourethral gland helps in clear the male urethra of any residual urine prior to ejaculation. It also increases sperm motility. Prostate gland is the largest accessory gland of the male reproductive system. This fibromusculoglandular structure surrounds the ejaculatory ducts at the base of the urethra just below the bladder. Characteristics of prostatic fluid, thin and opalescent with characteristic odor, slightly acidic in reaction, rich in calcium and contains enzyme fibrinolysin and acid phosphatase. Prostatic gland secretions constitute 20% of semen's total volume. Now we will discuss about the supporting structures of male reproductive system. This include spermatic cord, scrotum and penis. Spermatic cord suspends the testes in the scrotum. It is a thick cord-like structures present in the inguinal canal. Next external genital organ is the scrotum. It is a fibromuscular cutaneous sac divided into two compartments. Each compartment contains one of the two testes. This location is important in sperm production which occurs within the testes and proceeds more efficiently when the testes are kept 2 to 4 degrees centigrade below the core body temperature. Prolonged exposure to elevated temperature, fever, or thermoregulatory dysfunction can lead to temporary or permanent sterility as a result of a failure of spermatogenesis, whereas steroidogenesis is unaltered. Pampiniform plexus of blood vessels is a network of many small veins. Main function is, is venous return from the testis, plays a role in the temperature regulation of the testis. It acts as a counter current heat exchanger, cooling blood in adjacent arteries. An abnormal enlargement of the pampiniform plexus is a medical condition called varicocin. Next external organ is penis, which is the male copulatory organ. It is a common outlet for urine and semen. This penis is divided into three parts, root, body and glans penis. Composed of three cylindrical bodies of erectile cavernous tissue, corpora cavernosa and corpus spongiosum. Penile urethra is a tube within the penis that conveys semen out of the body during ejaculation. Glans is the rounded, highly sensitive head of the penis. Prepuce is a fold of a skin covering the head of the penis. After covering the functional anatomy of male reproductive system, our next topic of discussion is blood testis barrier. As I told you earlier that the wall of seminiferous tubules are lined by primitive germ cells and Sertoli cells. Sertoli cells are large complex glycogen containing cells that is stretched from the basal lamina of the tubule to the lumen. The tight junction between adjacent Sertoli cells form blood testis barrier. This barrier separates the lumen of the seminiferous tubules into two compartments, basal and apical compartment. The functions attributed to Sertoli cells are maintenance of blood testis barrier by tight junctions. They secrete androgen binding proteins, mullerian inhibiting substance, enabin and estrogen hormones. It provides physical support and nutrition to sperm cells throughout the process of spermatogenesis. They phagocyte defective sperms and they secrete seminiferous tubular fluid. This seminiferous tubular fluid is quite different from plasma. It contains very little protein and glucose, but rich in androgens, estrogens, potassium ion, inositol, and glutamic acid and aspartic acid. Next is functions of blood testis barrier. This blood testis barrier prevents the entry of large molecule from interstitial fluid compartment to the lumen of the seminiferous tubules. 
It prevents noxious agents from blood to the lumen of the seminiferous tubules. It prevents antigenic products of spermatogenesis to blood. And it establishes osmotic gradient so that fluid goes to lumen of seminiferous tubules. Now let's discuss about the functions of testis. The two principal functions of testis are spermatogenesis and endocrine functions. What is spermatogenesis? Spermatogenesis refers to the process of formation of spermatozoa from the primitive germ cells that is spermatogonia. Phases of spermatogenesis are as follows. First, phase of mitotic division of spermatogonia. Each spermatogonium divides mitotically five times to form 32 spermatogonia. The division occurs in the basal compartment of the seminiferous tubule. Next is phase of formation of primary spermatocyte by mitotic division. The 32 spermatogonia undergo mitosis to form 64 primary spermatocytes. Primary spermatocytes are large cells with large nucleus having diploid number of chromosomes. Next phase is phase of formation of secondary spermatocyte by meiotic division. Each primary spermatocyte undergoes meiotic division. After first reduction division, the 64 tetraploid primary spermatocytes are converted into 128 primary spermatocytes with diploid number of chromosomes. The 128 primary spermatocytes to form 256 secondary spermatocytes having haploid number of chromosomes. Therefore, 50% of sperms will have X chromosome and other 50% will have Y chromosome. Next phase is phase of formation of a spermatid. Each secondary spermatocyte divides mitotically to give rise to two spermatids. Thus, a total of 512 spermatids are formed from a single spermatogonium. And the last phase is phase of formation of a spermatozoom, that is spermiogenesis. The spermatids do not divide further but undergo morphological changes to form sperms or spermatozoa. The spermatid undergoes changes in the shape and orientation of its organelles. The spermatids mature into spermatozoa in the deep fold of the cytoplasm of the Sertoli cells. What are the factors influencing spermatogenesis? The first factor is hormones like testosterone, follicular stimulating hormone FSH and luteinizing hormone LH. This affects the spermatogenesis. In addition to these, growth hormone and thyroxine also influence the spermatogenesis. Next is temperature. The temperature in the scrotal sac should be around 32 to 35 degrees Celsius. If the temperature surrounding the testis is increased, it can lead to degeneration of seminiferous tubules as observed in undescended testis, that is cryptorchidism. Nutritional factors like certain vitamins have definite influence. Inhibiting factors like radiation, alcohol, nicotine, infections, for example, mumps, may lead to sterility. Let's discuss in detail hormonal control of spermatogenesis. The first hormone is testosterone. Testosterone is secreted by interstitial cells of leading of testis. It is essential for growth and division of germinal cells. Luteinizing hormone stimulates cells of leading its role in testosterone secretion. Next, follicle stimulating hormone or FSH stimulates Sertoli cells, stimulate primary spermatocyte to undergo first meiotic division to form secondary spermatocytes. It helps in conversion of spermatids to sperm. Next is estrogen. Estrogen is formed by conversion from testosterone by Sertoli cells. This is essential for spermatogenesis. Growth hormone necessary for controlling metabolic functions of testis. It promotes an early division of a spermatogonia. And inhibit, which inhibits secretion of FSH and GnRH, inhibit or decrease rate of spermatogenesis. Let's describe the structure of a sperm. 
Spermatids first formed have usual characteristics of epithelioid cells. Soon each spermatid elongates into a spermatozoon having length 55 to 65 micron meter. It is divided into three parts. Head, which is 4 to 5 micron meter long, contains DNA. Surrounded by acrosome containing enzymes like hyaluronidase enzyme, proteolytic enzymes and acid phosphatase enzyme. Neck is the narrow constricted part which contains mitochondria. Next is tail which is the motile portion. It propels the sperm forward. How are the sperms stored? About 120 million sperms are formed each day. A small quantity of them is stored in epididymis, but most of them are stored in vas deferens and ampulla of vas deferens. They can remain stored maintaining their fertility for about a month. What is maturation period of a sperm? Sperms require several days to pass through epididymis. In early part of epididymis, sperms are non-motile. Within 18 to 24 hours after an entry into epididymis, they develop motility. Secretion of seminal vesicles and the prostate have a stimulating effect on sperm motility, but the spermatozoa become fully motile only after ejaculation. Next is capacitation of sperms. Multiple changes taking place to activate spermatozoa when they enter female genital tract are collectively known as capacitation of a spermatozoa. It takes 1 to 10 hours for changes to occur. After this capacitation, sperm's motility increased. This is sperm prepare for the acrosomal reactions to penetrate the ovum. Sperm survive for two days in female genital tract. Next is composition of semen. Semen consists of fluid and sperms ejaculated from vas deferens 10%, seminal vesicle fluid 60% and prostate gland fluid 30%. Volume is 2 to 5 ml, pH 7.2 to 7.8, appearance white or grayish white, viscous, liquefactions occurs after 30 minutes, sperm concentration varies between 20 to 250 millions per ml. No agglutination present. Motility more than 60% progressively motile. Penetration more than 30 mm. Viability more than 75% viable. Normal morphology more than 70%. Immature forms less than 2%. And leukocytes present occasionally. What is the mechanism that produces Penile erection and ejaculation. Penile erection. Erotic psychic stimuli and sensory impulses from genitalia passes to lumbar spinal cord. Efferents, that is parasympathetic nerves, pass through pelvic nerves, nervi erigentis, which produces acetylcholine, VIP, nitric oxide, that increases cyclic GMP production. This leads to dilatation of arterioles of penis. The erectile tissues of the penis fills with the blood. The veins of the penis get compressed, blocking the blood outflow from the penis. Penis becomes hard and elongated. And thus, erection is due to pelvic nerve or parasympathetic nerve. Ejaculation is a two-part spinal reflex that involves emission, the movement of the semen into the urethra, and ejaculation proper, the propulsion of the semen out of the urethra at the time of orgasm. The afferent pathways are mostly fibers from touch receptors in the glans penis that reach the spinal cord through the internal pudendal nerves. The spinal reflex centers for this part of the reflex are in the upper sacral and lowest lumbar segments of the spinal cord, and the motor pathways traverse the first to third sacral roots and the internal pudendal nerves. Male sexual excitement disappears within 1 to 2 minutes after ejaculation. Erection also ceases after ejaculation. Next is endocrine functions of testis. Three hormones are secreted from the testis. First is testosterone, secreted by interstitial cells of leading 4 to 9 mg per day. Next is androstenedione. 
it is the precursor of blood estrogen in man next is dihydrotestosterone this dihydrotestosterone is synthesized by the action of 5 alpha reductase on testosterone it 20% of it is formed in testis and 80% formed in peripheral tissues. This dihydrotestosterone is twice potent than the testosterone. Androgens like testosterone and dihydrotestosterones are synthesized from cholesterol or directly from acetylcoenzyme A in both testis and adrenal cortex. Testosterone is carried in blood by binding with plasma, albumin and beta globulin. At target tissue, it is converted into dihydrotestosterone. Degradation of testosterone occurs in the liver. Functions of testosterone Along with estrogen, testosterone causes epiphyseal closure in the bones, so linear growth is stopped. Testosterone causes descent of the testis into the scrotum. Therefore, to treat undescended testis, it is administered. It increases the production of erythropoietin and so the RBC count increases. It increases basal metabolic rate during adolescence by 5 to 10 percent. How is this testicular functions regulated? The two main functions of testis that is spermatogenesis and secretion of testosterone are controlled by the hypothalamic hypophyseal testicular axis. Cells of arcuate nuclei of hypothalamus secrete gonadotropin releasing hormone GnRH. Ending of these neurons terminate in median eminence of hypothalamus. From here, GnRH pass through hypothalamo hypophyseal portal system to anterior pituitary, where it stimulates secretion of LH and FSH. GnRH mainly controls LH secretion. LH and FSH are glycoproteins. Both of these hormones affect target cells by activating cyclic AMP, second messenger system which in turn activates a specific enzyme system in respective target cells. LH stimulates cells of leading in testis to secrete testosterone which has a reciprocal effect on pituitary to inhibit LH secretion in two ways. A greater part of inhibition of LH secretion results from direct effect of testosterone on decreasing GnRH secretion that is negative feedback effect. Testosterone also has a weak negative feedback effect on anterior pituitary to inhibit secretion of LH. There is also a negative feedback control of semiferous tubule activity through hormones inhibin on release of FSH and to a certain extent on release of GnRH. Some of the important applied aspects in relation to male reproductive physiology are cryptorchidism, extirpation, hypogonadism in male and hypergonadism in males. Cryptorchidism or undescended testes. This refers to a condition in which the descent of testis may fail to occur or may be incomplete. This undescended testis may lie in the lumbar region or iliac fossa in 15% of the cases, an inguinal canal in 25% of the cases, and upper part of the scrotum in 60% of the cases. Normally, testis descends into scrotum by valerian inhibiting substances in the fetal life. In cryptorchidism, the effects are due to increased temperature in the testis. What are the effects? When there is presence of undescended testis, seminiferous tubules are not developed. So, spermatogenesis fails to occur and this leads to sterility. Whereas, leading cells are normal, so production of testosterone and dihydrotestosterone hormones are normal and therefore, Secondary sexual characters develop normally. Treatment Cryptorchidism should be treated as early as possible to prevent male sterility. Surgical correction is advised for correction of undescended testes. However, in some children, administration of testosterone or gonadotropic hormone can cause the testes to descend 
provided the inguinal canal is large enough to allow passage of testis. Extirpation or castration refers to the removal of testis. It will produce following effects. If this extirpation occurs before puberty, this produces a clinical condition known as inoecoidism. It is characterized by permanent sterility as there is no testis, so there are no pumps. Under development of external genitalia, that is penis and scrotum, and accessory sex organs. Under development of secondary sexual characters, that is scanty hair growth on face, trunk, and in axillary area. Larynx growth arrested. The person grows taller because of delay in epifacial closure in the long bones. Effects of extirpation after puberty. Under such circumstances, some of the male secondary sexual characters and accessory organs, not only for development but also for maintenance, are depressed, while some of the masculine features are retained. As accessory sex organs are depressed, normal external genitalia, sexual desire and sexual activity slightly impaired, presence of masculine voice, other body functions like life span, intelligence, etc., are not affected. Next is hypogonadism in males. It results from absent or deficient testicular functions which may occur in following conditions like congenital non-functioning of testis, underdeveloped testis, cryptorchidism, absence of androgen receptors in testis. Effects of male hypogonadism depends upon whether the testicular deficiency occurs before or after puberty. If it occurs before puberty, it leads to permanent sterility, underdevelopment of external genitalia, underdevelopment of secondary sexual characters, and abnormal bone growth. If it occurs after the onset of puberty, it leads to atrophy of accessory sex organs. Next is hypergonadism in males. Hypergonadism in males results from excessive secretion of male sex hormones that is androgens as occurs in tumors of leading cells. It is characterized by rapid growth of musculature and bones, but the height is less due to early closure of epiphysis. There is excessive development of sex organs and secondary sexual characters at an early age. The tumors can also secrete estrogenic hormones which can cause overgrowth of breast that is gynecomastia. What is vasectomy? Vasectomy is a surgical procedure for male esterilization or permanent contraception. In vasectomy, there is bilateral ligation of vast difference, so sperms are absent in the semen. However, immediately after vasectomy, sperms may be present beyond the ligation. Hence, vasectomized patients are to be advised to follow some other contraceptive methods. Sperms may be absent only after many 30 ejaculations. It is a convenient and safe contraceptive procedure. Later restoration of vast differences 50% successful. Antibodies against sperms develop and there is no changes in physical and psychological sexual characteristics. That brings us to the end of this lecture. I would like you to remember these key points. Functional anatomy of the testis. Functions of the testis like spermatogenesis, endocrine functions of the testis, control of testicular functions and its applied aspects. Thank you.